Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My dad skipped my wedding but crashed my baby shower dressed as a clown. Now I'm cutting him out of my life for good. My dad's been pretty hit and miss my whole life for supporting me. He was what I call a volunteer parent, but not in the way step parents can be. Supportive for a kid that's not theirs. He was just there when it was the most convenient for him, which is never a sign, but I always loved my dad anyways and I typically made excuses as to why he wasn't around. When I was a kid, I'd pretend he was like a super secret spy, and he couldn't always be around because he was always saving the world. What a joke that really was, though. I had a wedding. You would think this would be some super important do not miss unless you die event in your child's, but apparently not to my dad. At the last minute, he texted me that he had to have an emergency meeting with his ex-wife. He didn't even have the balls to tell me to my face that he wasn't going to walk me down the aisle. I'm his only daughter, so this is a one-of-a-kind opportunity that you would think he wouldn't want to miss. There should have been nothing more important to him than his daughter's wedding. Of course, I am nothing short but livid that he wasn't there for me that day, so who can really blame me when I decided that I didn't want him at my baby shower? Of course, my mom says baby showers aren't actually for men anyways. My mom says baby showers are typically just for the women so that they can celebrate the baby and bring gifts and whatnot. This sounds completely crazy to me in general, but now my dad is throwing a complete hissy fit because I was not going to invite him. I really don't even know who told him I was pregnant, I certainly didn't because I didn't want him around and I felt so utterly disrespected by his lack of caring about me. If he didn't want to be there for my wedding, why on earth should I allow him to be there for my baby or baby shower? I don't want to let my child have the same disappointment that I had from his grandfather. Now though, my dad's threatening to ruin my baby shower if I don't invite him. I'm not completely sure how he expects to do that exactly though. If he wasn't at my wedding during my most important day, why does he care to be at my baby shower? Actually, why does he deserve to be at my baby shower? He's never actually been there for me. Maybe I should just have a complete talk with him to explain my views. I doubt it will actually do anything, but you should always try, right? Update 1. I finally had a talk with my dad. I was able to ask him what was so important that he had to leave my wedding to go see his ex-wife. He wouldn't explain to me what happened to her or why he walked out. This is actually really typical for my dad. He never tells the whole truth. Why start now? But at least he did actually apologize though and said that yes, he should have been there for my wedding. I'll take what I can get at this point with him, I guess. He said he was acting so rash about coming to my baby shower simply for the fact that it was my first child. It was a boy and he really wanted to be there for my son. He sounded so sincere when he told me why he wanted to be there. It's completely possible that I could be getting played yet again with this whole ordeal. I really feel like he's being sincere, but I don't know. I don't think he still deserves to come to my baby shower. Of course, I don't want him to miss out on anything since it's his first grandson, but I really need him to show some initiative here. That being said, during our meeting I told him that I had to really think about everything before I gave him an answer on if he could come or not. He's my father. If he wants to be there in that way, I want him to be there. But it's also a question of if he actually wants to be there. Is he going to let me down and not show up after all he's threatened and I'll just have to let him back in, or is he going to actually show up and be what he's supposed to be as my father? Anyways, I guess I'll figure it out. I want to do what's right for me, not what will make him happy. Update 2. Alright, I made my decision. I decided he can't come. I can't continue to let myself be subjected to his constant disappointments. Either he shows up in my life or he doesn't. He can't continue to get my hopes up just to let me down. I'm going to tell him that I can't do this anymore and that he's not invited to my baby shower. Well, that went about as well as you figured it could go. I told him in person and he walked off without another word to say. I figured of course that he was mad and I can understand the fact that he was mad, but I hoped he would just go cool off and that would be that. Of course, for my dad, that wasn't the case. My guests and I got to the baby shower and everything was going really well. We played games and we were in the middle of opening the presents before eating and then continuing more games afterwards when someone walked in wheeling a box. The box was wrapped and looked just like a big present. The man appeared to be in a delivery uniform, which was okay. I assumed that someone had bought maybe a stroller or who knows, maybe even a crib and it was being delivered as those items can be pretty big. Boy, was I wrong. The delivery man got the box to me and I started to open it, but the box started to move. This, of course, really shocked, scared me. The box tumbled off the platform, busted open, and my dad popped out. Not only did he pop out of the box, but he was dressed like a clown of all things. He kicked out of the box all haphazardly, looking like he was drunk. After kicking out of the box, he jumped up and tried to do like some weird-ass dance. He ran around the room screaming and singing for several minutes, annoying my guests then came back to the front of the room where I was and yelled to everyone at the party that he was my father and that I had denied him an invite to my bee shower and that he didn't know how I could be such an ungrateful daughter. 
This obviously upset me. I'm pregnant after all and now my father comes in looking and acting like a complete idiot, embarrassing me in front of all my guests. I broke down crying. I literally broke down crying and got up and just ran out of the side door. I am at a loss for words about how anyone can be so insensitive to another person's feelings. What's worse is he made me out to be the bad person in front of all my guests when it's him who didn't come to my wedding. He's the one who was never there for me. The moment I choose to do something for myself instead of putting out an olive branch and allowing him to be there, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I am at a complete loss for words and my father is the worst person in the world. I've decided from this point forward to just cut him out of my life. He's never been there for me and he always ruins everything in my life. I will be much happier without this volunteer parent being in my life or my son's life. I will not allow him to be treated the way I have been. Good for you, girl. Female empowerment. I'm sorry, but I agree with your dad. How cold are you to not invite him? Maybe he had a right to behave the way he did. My husband William and I have three children. Charlotte, 22, female. Sebastian, 11, male. And Leo, 7, male. Our rule is that if a child is in school, then they do not need to get a job or pay rent. If they have finished school, then they need to have a job and pay rent. Charlotte got her associates last year and isn't interested in any more school. We offered Charlotte a deal that she could either pay a $1,500 monthly rent. We live in a very expensive area, so $1,500 is less than half of what most people pay every month for rent. Or she could help with Sebastian and Leo and not have to pay any rent. Charlotte chose to help with her brothers and not pay rent. William and I asked Charlotte to drop off and pick up Sebastian and Leo from school on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, as well as any needed appointments. We reimbursed Charlotte for the gas she spent driving them. William and I do not go out very often, maybe three times a month. We always got Charlotte's go-ahead before making plans and asking her to stay home with Sebastian and Leo. Last month, William and I planned to meet with a friend for dinner, but our friend had to cancel last minute for an emergency. We decided to go back home and immediately noticed that Charlotte's car was gone and Sebastian and Leo were in the front yard playing. When we asked where Charlotte was, Sebastian and Leo explained that she had left earlier and they were locked outside. Sebastian and Leo told us that Charlotte leaving them home alone was a very normal thing, but they didn't say anything before since they didn't think it was a big deal and also liked being home alone. William and I kept trying to call Charlotte, but she was not picking up. About a half hour before William and I planned on being home, we had been calling her for over three hours at this point. Charlotte pulled up in the driveway. William and I told Charlotte she cannot babysit Sebastian and Leo anymore. She's lied to us for over a year and destroyed our trust in her. Charlotte is now paying $1,500 in rent every month, which helps cover the cost of Sebastian and Leo's nanny. Charlotte got frustrated last Friday and told William and me how unfair we were for making her pay $1,500 on top of doing chores. We told Charlotte if she wants to live in this house, then those are the rules. If she doesn't like it, then she can go ahead and walk out the door. Charlotte's biological mom, Phoebe, called William and me awful parents and accused us of choosing our new children over Charlotte. Phoebe posted a rant on Facebook voicing this opinion. Friends have reached out to us because they know we aren't favoring Sebastian and Leo over Charlotte. But they said that we were too harsh in telling Charlotte to either deal with our rules or walk out the door because it's a hard thing to hear from your parents at any age and we should try to work out a compromise. But Charlotte broke our trust and lied for over a year. I don't see how a compromise would solve anything. Ada, some additional information because several people have asked. Charlotte works as an ultrasound technician and earns about $5,000 every month. In our area, most starter homes cost more than $3,000 every month, not counting utilities. Phoebe moved two hours away after Charlotte turned 18, so a commute from Phoebe's house to Charlotte's current job is obviously impossible. That is Phoebe's reasoning for why she cannot take Charlotte in and expects William and I to just let what Charlotte did slide. It looks like there's been some confusion when I say starter home. I'm referring to a studio apartment or a single room in a shared apartment. Charlotte gets a massive discount living with us compared to if she lived on her own, especially because we provide her utilities and food at home. NTA? She's not a child, she's 22, and leaving the two younger kids home alone could get you in a world of problems depending on the rules in your state. She's been irresponsible apparently for quite some time. In the beginning, she had a choice of arrangements. She chose the child care option and then didn't hold up her side of the deal, so you put her into the other option of paying rent. It's not like you kicked her out, which you totally could have done, technically since she's an adult. If her bio mom is so invested in her living arrangements, why doesn't she offer a spot in her home? And if paying rent and doing some chores seems onerous to her, she's going to have a rough time dealing with full-fledged adulting when she's on her own. Seems to me the compromise here is that you're still letting her live in your home at all, SMH.
NTA, you told her her options and she chose to look after her younger siblings. Then she actively went behind your back for over a year, not fulfilling her end of the deal. Also, leaving the boys at home and locked out of the house seems to be the norm for her while you were out of the house. It's lucky you discovered what she was doing before something had happened to the boys. Also, $1,500 a month is nothing in a city that is expensive. If it's a major city like the one I live in, then that wouldn't even get you a studio apartment. So really, she shouldn't be complaining because if she had her own place, she would pay rent, utilities, cook her own meals, and then still have to do chores. People saying you shouldn't charge your children are also the ones who get shocked when their adult children are not independent and still rely on them in adulthood. I'm 46, female. My daughter just turned 17 last week. She loves surprises, so I threw her a surprise party. I called, texted, contacted all her friends, and invited them. My daughter has been best friends with Matt, 17, male, since elementary school, and they started dating two years ago. Matt is a really sweet boy and he treats my daughter very well. I called Matt to tell him about the party and he was a bit confused. He told me that he and my daughter had broken up two weeks ago. That was news to me. My daughter was still going out at least twice a week, always telling me she was going out with Matt. She had even told me she was going out with Matt the night before I called Matt. I still have no idea where she's been going and it's very concerning to me that it must be something bad because she's keeping up the ruse that she's still with Matt. Plus, she's been hanging out with some new people in the last few months. One of them is a person who my daughter used to joke about being a hard drug addict. She doesn't make those jokes anymore, but she used to make them very seriously and frequently, so that concerns me. I didn't say this all to Matt. I apologized for calling him and told him to have a good day. Before I hung up, he asked if he actually could come to the party as he really wants to talk to my daughter and she's been distant at school. Again, Matt is a really good kid and he's known my daughter for a long time. If she was really into something dangerous like drugs or alcohol abuse, which sadly runs in my family, talking to him might be able to help her out. So I told Matt he could come to the party, but he had to leave if my daughter asked him to leave. Well, the party was last week and my daughter was surprised by all her guests, but she got really mad when she saw Matt. I saw her having an angry conversation with him and he left shortly after that. After the party, she told me that she and Matt were broken up and she couldn't believe he had come. I told her that I had known they were broken up, but I invited him because I thought it might be good for him to talk to her. She was livid. She called me a terrible mother and she's been cold to me ever since. I understand how I could have hurt her, but I still don't know if I was fully in the wrong in this situation. I love her more than anything, and I really wanted to do what was best for her. I'm sort of lost, so I was hoping you all could give me a judgment so I can understand the situation better. Ada, Yuta, you invited him thinking they were dating. Fine. He told you they were broken up, so you assumed he wasn't coming. Fine. He asked if he could come anyway. Correct response? Let me ask my daughter if she wants you to come. Edit. If it wasn't a surprise party since it was, then it should have just ended there. Instead, you snuck it on her, manipulatively. There are a lot of other things floating around this situation that is concerning stuff that you aren't wrong about and should investigate more, but that was what your question was about, so that's the ruling. Why to? Instead of asking your daughter why they broke and asking if she was okay, you decided to invite Matt to her party. I can't wrap my head around how you thought it was a good idea and why you thought it would be good for your daughter to have him there. You automatically took Matt's side and thought you'd make his feelings and wants, if he wanted to talk to her, a priority over your daughter's. If she didn't want to talk to him, I would 100% have my daughter's back and not invite him. Did you even consider that he did something to your daughter to cause them to break up? Doesn't sound like it. How can you have so little disregard for your daughter, her well-being, and her wishes? Is this a pattern for you? Is there a reason your daughter withholds information for you? I used to do that with my parents and it was because they never trusted me. They took everyone else's side and punished me when they didn't agree with the choices I made for myself. If Matt hadn't told you about the breakup, then you wouldn't have been the A, but because she didn't tell you either, so it would be her fault. But you have said you were indeed informed of the breakup and you had only heard Matt's side of the story. Even if you think you know someone, there's always a chance they would do something you didn't expect. Maybe Matt managed to really hurt your daughter during the breakup and seeing him again therefore really upset her, regardless of whether he hurt her or not. Springing a confrontation upon her at an event that is supposed to be positive and a happy occasion for her is not okay. This was not the time or place for them to talk out their issues, even if she was informed beforehand. Next story Mike, 40F husband, 42M Jack, invited our niece, 22F Holly, his sister's daughter, to stay with us for a month. She was laid off and her mom was pressuring her to find work. He wanted to give her space to decompress and think about next steps. I love Holly. She's wonderful. I'm happy to host her and I am excited to see her. I took issue with Jack extending the invitation without looping me in first. He informed me after the fact. Some background. 
I'm the primary caregiver for my parents and grandma since October 2021. They are disabled, don't drive or cook. My mom has had a slew of medical issues with 15 hospitalizations in the past three years plus. Um, visits I've lost count of. Two of her admissions she was in ICU on event and almost died. It's been stressful. I'm at the hospital daily when she's there and am her advocate. I'm her only child and all responsibility is on me. I've been severely burnout for the past year juggling their needs and working a full-time job. Jack is aware of my burnout. We started IVF in January, which adds another layer of stress. Jack works from home. He's required in the office three weeks a year for scheduled events. One of those weeks was Holly's first week here, which meant me stepping up to do the majority of work as hostess, cooking, etc. On top of caregiving tasks and IVF acts, Holly's worth it. But given the stress in our life right now, I wanted to opt in by my own choice versus being voluntold by Jack. And when he told me she was coming, I expressed only excitement. After her being here two weeks, I spoke with him because he was checked out about her visit and not communicating. For X, her first week here, he had to work late three nights due to events he knew in advance. I found out he wouldn't be home until 10 p.m. when I text him at 4, asking what time I should have dinner ready. The second week, he was supposed to work from home. I found out at dinner Sunday night because I asked a question about planning not because he told me that his schedule changed and he was driving into the office the entire week. That night, I expressed frustration at his lack of involvement in her stay. In the middle of the argument, I said something like, you invited her without giving me any say. The least you could do is communicate proactively or book some tickets for the things she wants to do. I've made all the plans, purchased all the tickets, and made all her meals. He said, you want me to ask permission for someone to come to my house? I said it wasn't about asking permission, it was about communicating with his wife. He said, we have a real problem if I have to ask you permission for someone to visit me in my house. I repeated it wasn't about permission, it was about treating his spouse as an equal and a partner. We've not yet resolved the conversation because we won't argue in front of Holly. None of this is her fault and I don't want her to think we are arguing because of her. ATA wow. I woke up to so many comments. Thank you all for taking time to read this and comment. I will read all of them, but it may take me a bit. Some quick info based on the ones I've read so far. Holly is 22 but is young for her age. I don't know if this matters or not, but she isn't from the U.S. And grew up in a country where it isn't safe for her to go out and explore on her own. My in-law's words, not mine. Because of that, she isn't very independent slash confident. She just got her license in a car one to two years ago. I hadn't considered letting her go explore on her own here, but it doesn't mean it isn't feasible. That decision I'd probably leave in her and Jack's hands. Also, when I said to my husband, I've cooked all her meals, what I meant, and he knew this, was dinner. I see how that's not clear how I wrote it. She has been cooking for herself and cleaning after herself during the day, breakfast and lunch. My parents have specific dietary needs and I have to make them dinner anyway, so I didn't ask her to cook. She did offer to help with prep several nights and I took her up on that when she offered. She did make me lunch two days. People were asking how much Jack normally helps around the house. We pay for cleaning service in our home twice a month and lawn service for our yard twice a month because we don't have the time. Normally he and I split making dinner, three nights each and one night we get takeout. He used to be fine with this but has gotten increasingly annoyed slash grumpy about it over the past one to two years. Because my dad is a finicky eater and I suspect he is also feeling burnout. I drive my family to 90% of their appointments. But if I have a work conflict, he will move things around to take them and does not complain about that. He handles all things grooming and vet for our dogs. We split pet feedings and potty breaks between us. He does his own laundry and ironing but defaults things like sheets and kitchen towels to me. He washes the dishes after dinner every night even if I tell him to let me do them sometimes. I make sure 90% of the bills get paid and handle the groceries. There has always been a selfish streak in him that flares over certain things but he can also be very thoughtful and considerate especially with gift-giving or planning dates slash celebrations like birthdays. It has also taken a significant hit since my mom fell ill. He is not an incel though he might sound like it in my post. IVF. I will read all of these comments and consider them deeply. We'll also share the sentiments with him and see how he feels and what he thinks. We don't take the responsibility of becoming parents lightly. It is also something we both always wanted. Even with the added stress and chaos that littles bring. Perhaps because of my own upbringing it doesn't feel insurmountable to care give and be a mom. My mom and I moved in with my grandparents after she and my bio father divorced. He was abusive and totally absent from my upbringing. The man I refer to as my dad is my stepdad. My grandfather was disabled on one side from a stroke and my grandmother care gave for him and also helped her mother-in-law, a great aunt, and an older third cousin with no children with their groceries, errands, driving, etc. The difference being she was retired and all those women lived in different homes. I understand the unequal partners and disrespect red flags, which was why I posted here to see if my feelings were valid.
and I will spend time reflecting on all of this before we start or postpone our next cycle. Thanks for watching till the end, wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.